Hi, Ray Hayden here, and this video is going to be a follow-up to my Dyson V8 Motorhead um, cordless vacuum, all right? In case I forgot which version I have, it's actually imprinted right on the uh, extension tube here. It's a Dyson V8 Motorhead, all right? So this is a Dyson V8. The V7 is uh, pretty similar to this one, according to the instructions. Um, they give you an instruction booklet, which pretty much goes through the whole thing in uh, various languages. And they have these... Um, these nice, um, you know, kind of universal language, you know, um, picture, you know, pictorial kind of things on how to uh, take the device, the device and use it, and also um, for inspections and how to clean the filters. Um, and nice, it's in blue, right, for water, because these are things you put water on, cleaning the filters. Uh, these are for the disassembly things. I'm going to put a link below. This will tell you how, where to go on the Dyson website to find the instructions for this particular model. But you can also go to Dyson and find if you have a different model, like the V11, V6, or whatever. But the V7 and V8 should be relatively the same. And looking at the top of the device right here, you'll notice there's a couple of colors. Gray is primary. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, you're not going to do anything with gray stuff. Uh, there's a bluish purplish kind of material here and then there's red red are action things like this one here says lift this to dump and you figure you lift it up and the bottom's going to open up but it, actually it's kind of a funny thing and i showed it in my unboxing video but when you lift it up the whole device lifts up with it and then the door opens right um, opens at the bottom and then uh so that's kind of an interesting thing i thought that was actually hilarious uh to do that the first time now, since I have this opened up like this, I'm going to show you how to disassemble it. There is a red button here. There's one on the other side. You can use either one. I'll use the for the lefties here. I'll, I'm, I'm a righty, but we'll use a lefty button here. And I'll push on that, right, while holding the whole device in two hands. This device is very, very light, all right? So just push that button, and it just lifts right off. Very easy. Don't force it anything. Everything's very flexible. You don't want to break anything, all right? <clears throat> then we're left with the uh, canister on the bottom. There is a release lever right here, holding everything in two hands. You wanna hold the big, uh, the battery part here, put your finger on that release button, and then just slide the cup down just a little bit, and it comes right off, okay? And then to put it back on, reverse the procedure, line it up with the little grooves, right? There's not a whole lot of wiggle room there, and then just push it back up into place. When you, when you get it on, push it back up into place, it clicks in place, it's locked on, and you could kind of shut the door, but not completely because you need to actually have the whole thing together. So reverse the process, line up the little levers, nice and easy, and push this down into place, it snaps in, all right? Then you can close the door on the bottom and you're cooking with gas, or electricity, should we say. Now these bluish purple things are filters. This other one here looks like a little spinny top kind of thing, spin the top, just you know, pinch that little, um, the pin on the top, just pinch that and pull up on it. And, it, and, and the filter comes right out. The white stuff on there is actually a picture of a water faucet. So you can wash this out. And the instructions explain uh, that that's you know, how you wash this thing out. The back end is another filter. Um, we have yet to have to wash either one of these out. They look clean to this day. They look very good. And we use this every single day. Now this has a little black dot on it right up here. Um, I'm assuming that means this side up. Um, it doesn't matter because there's a little sticker right there and I figure if I'm looking at it, it shouldn't be upside down. But this filter will fit on there what I would consider upside down. There's also a seam right here in the plastic. You can't see it really on the video probably, but it's like right there in the center, there's a seam. And uh, so it kind of also would indicate to me that they want you looking at a seam, that would be the top. So the black dot would be the top, but you can put it either way, it doesn't really make a difference. Now there is one problem with this device that I want to point out is the red trigger, right below the trigger, there should be a trigger guard. However, I tried to make this video a little earlier today, and this is what broke off the trigger guard. It's far too thin. It's not a very good connection. It is a little thicker at the bottom part there, okay? You can see there's a little bit of thickness there. It's not enough. It's just simply not enough. This whole thing needs to be like two or three times thicker than it is. I don't know, you know what, and to me, they don't even need the item at all. You don't even need to have that trigger guard there. But because this thing actually broke off during they're trying to make a video of it, and we don't you know, smash, bash, or crash this thing in any way, shape, or form, but there is a uh, sharp edges. There's two sharp edges here that I'm gonna have to use my Dremel tool, 
and uh, I have like a, a coarse sand spinner on there and I will gently uh, work to maneuver this down to make it nice and smooth uh, and flush so that I don't cut my finger. Because the way it is right now, I would indeed cut a finger and that's not good. So Dyson's gonna have to need to address that by on future models of whatever they make, make a thicker uh, a trigger guard or don't have it on there at all. I see no reason for the trigger guard to actually be there. Now in this video, I'm talking about the disassembly part. I'm gonna talk about the floor tool next, right? Um, but before I do that, I just wanna mention, I'm gonna make another video on the operation of this thing because we use it every single day and I have a really great uh, idea about how the whole thing works. And the one thing I wanna mention in that regard before I go into the floor tool is the suction selection. This is maximum and this is they say extended suction, uh, oh, high suction, extended run. And the other one over here is maximum suction. And in the uh, unboxing video, I said, why would anybody use anything but the maximum suction? And the answer is me, because I don't need it, right? We don't have any carpeting in the house. If you have carpeting, you're not gonna be able to use it all day long because even if you have tile floor on maximum suction, it's not gonna last that long. I may be able to get half the house done but if I have it on regular suction or high suction extended run, it will extended run for me to do the entire house. So let's go into the uh, floor tool piece. This is a rotator uh, beating bar. And um, it has a couple of stripes on the plastic case. You can see them there a little bit. Um, that's not dirt, that's just you know use or whatever. Scratches, I guess, from fine scratches from the uh, ro rotating, um, the rotating uh, beater bar. What I want to show you is how you take this thing apart. Now, this screwdriver is not as wide of a tool that I would like. So I have my uh, pocket knife here, and I think I have another one sitting around here too. Let me see something real quick. Okay, this has a blade that kind of sticks up a little bit, and I don't know if it'll fit in there. It does not, so that's not wide enough. This thing here sticks up a little bit, and it gives me a wider base, because what I don't want to do is I don't want to put a screwdriver in there and force it. Uh, basically, in all honesty, a quarter, something the size of a quarter, a coin, a large coin of some sort, would actually work best in this. But this, this little pocket knife works, and it allows me to turn this, um, to turn this uh, bar, uh, this little end cap, right? Maybe it's not going to work for me. I'm gently using a screwdriver because I don't want to break this thing. All right, so um, gently turn it. You don't want that to break. You're going to need this part, right? and it's, it pops off. Let me go ahead and put that back on a little bit. And I think I might actually be able to turn this if I use it, oh, if I Superman this thing enough. Nope, I can't turn it by hand. But anyway, so just gently, gently turn this thing. Push in a little bit, put a little bit of pressure, not much, and then turn a little bit until you feel it going, right? And then I can take my screwdriver off. Now, when I finish turning this, what's gonna happen is it, it pops out. There's a spring this part, by the way, comes off. All right, so this comes off. Then we have the beater bar, okay? It's a hollow tube, except on this end over here, you see, let me get that reflection. You see there's an end cap in there kind of thing. There's a little plug in there. So it only goes on way, one way. You can't break this, right? If you try to put it on the one way, it won't go. You just turn it around, put it on the other way, and you're good to go. There's a spring down at this end. It kind of helps push this thing back. I don't know how well you can see that on the video. My hand's in the way of what I'm trying to demonstrate, but there is a spring in here. So when you put this thing down in and you push it in, right? You push it in so it lines up, you're good to go. But you can take this part out. I do not see a way to, you know, end user, you know, field strip kind of thing. I don't see a way to remove this part, okay? But it'd be cool if you could remove this part easily somehow, clean this all out and everything else. But what I do is I basically take it out front of the house. And if you don't, you know, if you're an apartment dweller or you uh, don't have the uh, a hose outside your uh, apartment or house or anything like that, uh, you can just, you know, wash this part out here. I'd like leave the strainer in the sink if you're going to use a sink or something like that. Put the strainer in there. If you catch any dust or anything, you can clean that out, throw it in the trash. But it basically, there's a, a plastic lever here, a plastic, not lever, it doesn't move. There's a plastic uh, piece here. Behind that, I had some dust and stuff like that. So I took a hose and I shot water back in here and got the dust out, shot a bunch of water in through here, got all that dust out, and then through the side, I took um, kind of a, a little towel or something like that, a fuzzy towel, and I put it in there, right? And I kind of held it in place. 
Then I took my finger and I slid it. You wanna be careful because there's some kind of sharp parts in here, so be careful with that. And I took that and I grabbed the towel and I pulled it through to dry up any water. And I dried everything out very, very well and I got it all cleaned up, ready to go. And then basically just once everything's all dried out and everything, you let it sit, let it dry out, you know, uh, overnight and all that. Um, like I, I cleaned the floors this morning and then I washed this out after I got done cleaning the floors. So then just put this back in and this has a flop, flat part on it. Now you're basically, of course, the bottom of the device is flat, right? The bottom's flat, but this has a little flat notch on the top of it. So kind of tilt that off a little bit off the, out of the way, right? The device goes together, right? The cap fits in and then just turn it and that's, you know, with a screwdriver, I'd want a wider screwdriver than this. Just turn it till it clicks into place. Don't force it. You don't want to force any of this stuff. You want to take care of it as long as you can because it is not cheap. All right. So that's going to cover that part. And the other thing I want to cover is the connection. All right. When I connect this thing together, <clears throat> I do it vertically, not horizontally. Because to me, I love the tube. The tube is great and everything else. They have power running through this tube because you can see there's like there's two connections on the top. There's a two pin connection right up in there, right? That's taking power down to the motor head. This is run on power. So there is electricity running through this thing from the battery when you use it, right? So the one thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that when I'm assembling it, I assemble it vertically because I don't wanna put any stress. You can actually move this around a little bit. See if you can see that between the connection there. If I wiggle it around, it moves, okay? Don't worry about my hand and my arm moving, but you can see there's a little bit of motion in there. It's not a really firm connection, right? So not so bad on this part of it, <clears throat> but when you get the battery and everything else on this, and when you have the floor part connected at the other end, and you're connecting it like this, that's a lot of stress on these two connection points. And I don't want that. When you're putting it together vertically and everything, everything's in line, so there's the least amount of stress on it, right? Just snap it together there. <clears throat> and the top part, every time I get done using this thing, I take the top part off, put it on the shelf, and I start charging it up. It has a uh, wall mounting thing, which again is vertical, right? Less stress on the device, but, um, and that's the way, I, and I hold it like this, right? I hold it like that, so there's the least amount of stress. Until I put it on the floor, once you put this thing on the floor, right? Then the floor is holding it up, so there's less stress as well. Now, and one more thing I want to mention about this is this part of the battery right here, the, the handle. This is actually going to hit the back of my hand. Let me pull my, my sleeve up a little bit on this. My microphone cord out of the way. I'll tilt the camera down so we can see this, right? So uh, pull my arm up a little bit <clears throat> and my sleeve, right? When I'm using the, the uh, vacuum, right? And I'm going back and forth with this thing. When I come back, right? Back towards my, my hand, uh, back, back towards my, my body. I'm pulling it back towards me. This part actually hits my wrist, okay? Hits right there, right? So when it's hitting that, right, then I start pushing back forward, you know, forward again. So what I'm saying is the design of this thing may not have been for that in any way, shape, or form. It might just be serendipity, <laughs> just, just good luck. But when this thing hits my arm like that, it's, it doesn't hurt or anything. It, what I'm saying, it's a very good thing, accidental good thing that I like very much about the device. And when it hits that, then it's like, oh, okay, I'm back far enough. Don't go back any further because I might actually lift the back part of it up off the floor. And you go back too far, you might lift the back, and then you're losing suction. And some other interesting things that I'll talk about in my next video about this. But, um, but then I just go forward again, right? And the thing doesn't really, it's got these two little wheel things. Let me take it apart and show you this. It's got two little wheel things on it right here, and they do spin, right? But don't count on these things to be wheels. In all honesty, um, this is like a windshield wiper right here, this purple device right here. This is like a windshield wiper. And then um, I think it's replaceable because they got more red stuff here. So I tend to think that anything with the red on it is replaceable in some way. It looks like it can come out somehow, maybe. Um, but anyways, um, this thing here is just right. There's two little wheels right here too, right? Right here and over here. I actually just noticed those. <laughs> but um, these, uh, you know, this thing here is really just going to ride on this stuff here. It's just really riding on this. It's not riding on these wheels. These wheels do help a little bit, but you know, in all honesty, not much. And on a tile floor, if one of these things gets caught in a groove, you know, the grout line, it, it'll like kind of, and you don't want to follow the grout line for, you know, example, it, it might follow the grout line. So that's kind of a like, eh, you know, whatever, I can work around it kind of thing, right? So that is going, let me disassemble this, all right? Now, when I put this in the closet, by the way, at, you know, I'm done with it for today. 
I do keep the bottom connected. I don't really take that apart. And I just basically take it and I lean it up against something um, that's not like this. I lean it up against something like, here's a corner of the door here, right? So I'll lean it up against something in the closet, like a shelf or whatever, that will hold it so this doesn't fall down, right? So this holds it and it stands up just like that, right? And for the, um, for the motor head part of it, for the head, I actually just put it on the shelf. It sits on the shelf just like that, and the wire is set up in the shelf, so I just plug it in right there so it'll recharge. And it recharges, and you know, as soon as I'm done using it, it's back charging. It only takes, according to the tool here, according to the little chart, uh, it takes five hours to charge up fully. I don't think it takes that long. And you don't have to wait that long. For a full charge, you might wait five hours or two and a half or whatever, it depends. And, uh, but you can use it for a quick cleanup. Like say, we got a bunch of cats, right? So the cats go in a litter box, they throw a bunch of litter on the floor because that's what they do. Uh, and we just want to clean up around the litter boxes. So we'll just grab it, do a little bit of cleanup, you know, drop, clean it out, drop it out in the garbage can, put everything back together and just put it back on a charger. And the next morning, I can do the whole house. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. But I just want to mention that I can do, you know, according to the records or whatever on the house, we had about 2,200 square feet of living space in the house, right? And that's, that's kind of that's big, but it's actually less space than we used to have. This vacuum, the Dyson V8 on regular power, low power, does an adequate job. And it does a really good job, okay? Not just adequate, it does a great job. And I can do the entire house on a single charge, all right? Just, you know, it, it gets there. I can't do much more than the entire house. I might be able to do 2,250 or 2,300 square feet, you know, convert that to, uh, other parts of the world that don't use square feet. But um, in, in all honesty, I, I can do, I can do, I can cover our entire house in one shot and I don't have to re-empty the cup. You know, it's just picking up cat hair and kitty litter and stuff like that. Just a little dust. And because we do it every day, there's not that much, right? There is, but there's not, you know, in theory, there's not that much. It doesn't fill the whole cup. It's got a maximum fill line here. I've never hit the maximum fill line. So um, that's pretty good. So uh, with that, uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like this video, uh, make a comment below, let me know you came by to say hi, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, and um, you know, because I greatly enjoy the, uh, I appreciate the growth on the network, and until I catch you in the next video, take care and be well.